today is cleaning day. I'm gonna get to work on this floor, get it all scrubbed up, cleaned up, and ready to be primed and then painted so that my interior is nice and fresh and ready for insulation and all the other next steps to get this van done. It's a beautiful sunny day today, finally, after all the nasty weather that we've had here in Atlanta. I'm just thrilled. It's gonna be almost 70 today, and I'm gonna start scrubbing up all of these spots where you can see some paint has been worn off and there's a lot of dirt in here because this was a work truck. I've got my, my scrub brush and I've sprayed down some cleaner. I'm gonna be scrubbing on my hands and knees and see how it goes, wipe it all out. And I'm using this particular cleaner. I didn't find it recommended to me by anybody in particular. I just found it on Amazon, it looked like what I needed. Didn't wanna use just a regular household cleaner. So I'm gonna give it a go and see how it works out. So here's a quick take at after on my first just little test stretch. And you can see before I chose this particular cleaner because I wanted something that could get grease and grime off. I assume that a lot of the dirt in here was probably greasy dirt. So um, it seems like it's doing the trick. And like I said, I've just done this little tiny piece here that I've got to wipe off and I have all of that to go. So I've got my work cut out for me today. All right, I've just done this small section in here and I am really, really pleased with how it's coming out. This cleaner is getting up so much dirt, but I'm realizing that it's probably kind of hard on my hands. So I'm going to go get some gloves and I'm also gonna get a towel since I don't have a knee pad. I'm gonna get a towel just to fold up so that I'm not wrecking my knees on the metal here on the ridges. So I will be back. Yes, I know I've only got one glove. Forest ate the other one, so we're making do. All right, I am almost done. I had just this little section to do, and then I need to go back over and see what I missed and also do the walls. And it occurred to me that you might be watching this and wondering why I'm putting so much time and attention into the interior of the van on areas that nobody will ever see. And yeah, first it's the cleaning. It's gonna be sanding and priming and painting and all those kinds of stuff. And then it's gonna get covered up. The reason I'm doing that is, well, number one, I really, really want my paint to stick because I don't wanna have rust in the van further on down the line, especially rust that I can't see. Number two, I don't want weird smells. <laughs> uh, number three, I found out after I bought the van that it had been repossessed. I bought it in Alabama, but it actually belonged to somebody here in Atlanta who had it unfortunately repossessed. And I am wondering if maybe it was a COVID related job loss or something like that, but I feel bad and I feel bad for the van. So it's had a tough life in the past few years, just like I have, and I wanted to have some good vibes. So I feel like it deserves some love. Um, and then finally, my mother, when she was teaching me to sew, she would tell me that the way to tell the quality of a garment was to see, to look on the inside, see how the seams were done, how it was finished, how the fabrics matched, things like that. And I didn't fully understand that when I was 10 or 12, but as I've gotten older, that um, adage has stayed with me. And I think it's really true in a lot of ways. I mean, if you want to see if a piece of furniture is good quality, pull a drawer, a drawer out and see how the joins are and if you want to judge the quality of a person you certainly can't tell from the outside but you can tell by getting to know them on the inside and so for my van build i know i'm going to make a thousand mistakes along the way and i'm sure that you watching some of you will not hesitate to tell me what they are but i want to do the best i can i want to do a good job i want to make it a quality build and not because i want it to be instagram worthy and pretty and fancy but because I want it to be something that I really enjoy and a project that is worth doing. So that's why I'm starting 
with this um, leg work <laughs> on my hands and knees, getting this van clean and ready to go. I did go and get myself some other gloves. <laughs> These are my hair coloring gloves with pink on for my pink. <laughs> but the good thing is I actually have a matched pair and my hands were getting pretty fried from that cleaner. Um, it didn't smell terribly toxic, but it was definitely drying out my hands. So I'm gonna use the gloves and finish up and let things dry and then get my steel wool out. All right, well, I am done with the scrubbing and the cleaning. It's uh, probably hard to tell the difference, but I can definitely see it. And I'm really impressed actually by how clean those panels are. I thought there was a lot more uh, missing paint and scratches and it turned out a lot of it was just greasy dirt. So I'm excited about that and I'm about to start the next phase which is getting some steel wool out and just very gently sanding down all these places where the paint is worn down just so it, that when I prime it uh, and paint it that the paint will take better. I'm going to use some steel wool and then some tack cloth to get it all cleaned up to make sure I don't leave any steel parts to rust. And uh, yep, I'm ready to start phase two. So the good news is as I am doing this and I'm just really giving it a very, very light little dusting, I guess if you wanna call it that with the steel wool, but I'm not seeing any evidence of rust and I'm realizing that a lot of what I'm seeing here is not actually bare metal, it's the primer underneath. So I'm encouraged by that. I swept the floor a few times to get all that steel dust from the steel wool out and now I'm going to use this tuck cloth that I got at Home Depot. Uh, it is just a cotton fabric that's impregnated with something. It's kind of like a waxy substance but it's real sticky and it picks up any dust. I hope that's going to get the rest of the little pieces and I did not uh, actually use the steel wool on the walls here because I didn't want it to fall down into any cavities where I might not be able to clean it so I only used it on the floor and I think that the walls are going to be okay for priming and then painting as they are. So that's my plan. Hopefully it's a good one. Time will tell. All right, the floor prep is done and you may be able to hear the birds are singing for me in celebration. Uh, it didn't take too long, about three hours, I guess, altogether. And I would love to go ahead and start doing primer today, but I want to give it an overnight and just make sure that everything is good and dry and come back and see if there's any spots I missed, anything like that. So I will do that in the morning. And I had hoped I'd be able to do insulation tomorrow because definitely the clock is ticking between the time um, of starting this project and the time my lease is gonna be up. But I, the string I ordered to go into all the gaps to kind of create a network that will hold the wool in, um, is it's a hemp string that's naturally anti mold or anti anti is not the right word naturally mold and mildew resistant and so I'm going to use that to hold the wool in and I'm going to use as many kind of natural non-chemical materials as possible in the build I know I won't be able to do it completely that way there'll be some things that are artificial and some things that are probably not so healthy but I'm going to do my best just because I'm gonna be living in this place and it's gonna be small and any kind of off-gassing and stuff I'm not really a fan of. So I'm doing the best I can. So that hemp, hemp string that I ordered is coming in, I heard late tomorrow instead of tonight. So I won't be able to do that, which gives me an extra day to work on the painting and getting this area all prepped. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give myself one more day, do the final check and then in the morning I can spray the primer in the afternoon, I can do the white paint, and then I am going to take it to the dealership to get some warranty work done because there were a couple of outstanding warranties when I bought it, and I had to wait a few weeks for the parts to come in and also to get a new key, which if you ever lost a ProMaster key, they are expensive. All they gave me when I bought it was just a key without a key fob, so I had no remote lock or anything like that. So had to pony up the big bucks for that. I can't remember if it was two or 300, I think. Um, have to double check on that, but expensive. So anyway, worth it to have an extra key. I'll be glad to get that and um, glad to get the warranty work done. And then I'll be back to building again in a few days.